What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about driving a high performance fast boat, specifically at a higher rate of speed. So there's going to be a few things we're going to talk about. I'll have on the water demonstrations and things like that. But first we'll just talk about a few simple components of the boat, kind of the design of the hull, the shape of it, um, you know, certain things. It'll give you a little bit better idea of kind of what's actually happening as you're driving at high rate of speed. So you can start to correct things like chine walking and things like that you'll get a little bit better representation of what's going on. Okay, so we'll start at the front of the boat. This would be, you know, very simple, very basic here, but this is the keel. So this is essentially in the water at a lower rate of speed. This is gonna help cut the waves, things of that nature. Uh, it's also going to give you like a little bit of traction almost as you are steering the boat. Because as you go further down the hole here, you can see it, it does bottom out. It's gonna be the lowest point of your hole. And that is going to come into play because as you're going faster and faster, less of that is going to be in the water. Okay, we'll move into the back of the boat here. And then you're going to notice on the bottom, you're gonna have these, basically these ridges is what I'll call them. And these are called strakes. Now, I'm not a bass boat designer. I'm not a boat designer. There's actually a lot of engineering that goes into holes. And from most of my research over time, it feels like there is a handful of people who really crafted the bass boat design, the whole design. And over time, other people have kind of taken bits and pieces of different brands and kind of tweaked them a little bit. And then they start off another brand that's happened a lot of times in the bass boat industry. But essentially these are to, or reduce the amount of surface area of the boat that's actually in contact with the water. So that's going to kind of reduce some of your friction and get you better speed. And then you're also gonna get a little bit better handling with these. If you imagine like a flat bottom John boat, you don't have any ridges, you don't have anything on the bottom and you get up to speed and you go to like turn or something, it's gonna to wanna to just skid out all over the water. But you add some sort of ridge or something and it's going to kind of act like it's on rails a little bit it's going to almost grip the water a little bit better it's the best way i can describe it so you're going to notice these come all the way out to the edge of the boat here then it has this little step here and then it comes up off the hull so generally speaking in most boats there's also something called a chine which kind of is used on the outside of the hull to direct water from coming up to keep keep it from splashing essentially I don't even know if that's what you would consider this or not. Like I said, I'm not an expert in that field, but uh, we'll just say that's just kind of another strike, another part of the boat there. So then down here, we're gonna have the running pads. You're gonna hear people say the boat is up on pad. It's, it's only on the pad. You're gonna have a small section of the boat that's actually touching the water at high rate of speed, and that's what they're referring to here. So it's hard to get down here and see really well, but here's the drain plug. This area in here, is what's going to be considered the pad. So at a very high rate of speed, when your boat is running at its true, you know, maximum potential, maximum speed, the boat's basically gonna be only making contact in a perfect world on this small pad here. So when you start getting into chine walk and the boat kind of rocking left to right, it's basically sitting on this pad and then the boat comes off one way and then it rocks the other way and it goes back and forth. So you're basically fighting to keep the boat on balance on a relatively small surface area. So that's just some very basic parts of the boat hole. Again, I'm not an expert in that regard. I'm not gonna pretend that I am. That's just the basics of it. All right, now that we're on the water, we'll talk about a few things. So first and foremost, make sure you have your life jacket on. Make sure you got a kill switch connected, all that good stuff, because safety is number one priority. If you are new to high performance bass boats, which I'm going to assume that you're relatively new to them, if you're watching this video, do it on a, calmer day do it don't do this when there's a bunch of boat traffic and stuff when you're driving 70 miles an hour waves and things can just come up very very quickly and if you hit a wave going fast and you're not prepared you hit it at a weird angle or something it can launch you and it, it'll scare you and it'll probably be good for you as long as you're, you're not hurt but you definitely have to have some respect for the water uh, when you're traveling that fast just things can happen very quickly so make sure you can control everything that you can which is just your life jacket your kill switch and, and check over your motor check over your boat make sure everything's tight make sure you're not missing any like obvious hardware and things like that because you know if something comes wrong with the motor that could potentially come in the boat there's a lot of things that, that could happen that are not good so uh just you know pay attention to all that don't just go out and go crazy you know without looking things over at least a little bit so we'll talk about a few things with my setup which most boats probably have uh you got your blinker trim so that's your trim up and down right there and i've got a hot foot if you don't know what that is it's literally just a uh it's a gas pedal for your boat 
that's really nice. You can obviously have your trim on your shifter and stuff right here, but it's nice to have them hot foot because you just put this in gear, you don't mess with your throttle ever again. It's all foot control, and then that allows you to have both hands on the wheel, rough water or high speed driving like this. Just gives you the ultimate control. Okay, now as far as driving the boat goes, we'll start with getting really familiar with the trim. You're gonna to wanna to use the trim to basically dictate your speed. So just think that you're going to start off, you're gonna be trimmed all the way down, you're gonna give your boat full throttle. So you're gonna have your throttle cable all the way, right? You're not gonna go very fast because your boat's gonna be digging in the water like this. As you trim up, your boat's gonna go from being like nose down to you feel like it's flying. So that is basically you trimming up, that's your motor giving the boat lift, and you're gonna have less surface area of the boat in the water, and that's where you're gonna get your speed from. As you go faster and faster, you're gonna be on a smaller area, and then you're gonna get to the, what I was calling the pads. So you're gonna have that small area where at the optimal speed of the boat, that's really all that's gonna be in contact with the water. You get to that point, you get to that speed, you're gonna have a few things that are gonna come up that you may not be as familiar with being a newer driver to a high performance boat. And the first thing is gonna be chine walk. So what that is, your boat gets up and it's gonna start rocking like this. And what you're probably asking, well, why is it going to do that? Part of it's going to be weight, how it's distributed in the boat, but the biggest thing is going to be your motor. So your motor, your prop is turning clockwise. So that's gonna take your boat like this. It's always gonna to wanna to tilt it to the right a little bit. It's always gonna be wanting to do that. So your job as a driver is to counter that and give a little bit of left turn, a little bit of pressure on the wheel to get it from this to this. If you go too far, it's gonna go like this. Then it's gonna go back and forth like that. That's how you start getting the chine walk. So the biggest thing with chine walk is People say you can drive through it, you can correct it. You can correct it, but the best thing to do is if it gets out of control is to just trim down. You don't wanna just chop the throttle because what happens is if your boat's a little bit out of the water like that, your keel's kinda out of the water, and then you just chop the throttle, your your keel, so the, the, remember the V part of the boat where it comes together at the bottom, that's gonna drop in the water. And if you're, say you're kinda like this a little bit and up and it drops, well, it could potentially catch the front of that boat and kind of spin your boat around. So that's not what you want to have happen. So if you just trim down a little bit, it doesn't take much, just a little bit trim down and it'll straighten that right up. Now, as you get a little bit more advanced in your driving, it is possible, as long as it's not too out of control, to kind of correct it a little bit. If you're trimmed up really far, like at the max of it, I would just trim down. I wouldn't even try and mess with it. But if you are not trimmed up super, super far, it's pretty easy to correct. And the way you do that is basically you kind of steer to the right a little bit and then you back left and you kind of get it back on balance. It's a pretty quick movement really. Uh, I'll show that when I'm driving, but it's something you just have to get a feel for. So the biggest thing to remember here is use your trim as your speed. Have your throttle down all the way and adjust your trim. And a little bit of trim goes a long way when you get trimmed up and you get closer to you know, your boat really being out of water. Just a little bump up a time and you'll pick up a little bit more speed, you'll feel it lifts a little bit more and then just keep lifting it up just a little bit more and then you'll kind of find that sweet spot of your boat. All right, we got Bernie in the boat.
that was a little run there, about 70, 71. That's all I needed to show you guys, you know, how this boat can perform as far as how you can get chain walk, how you can correct it, and just how to kind of work your speed a little bit. So again, just be very careful when you're doing this, um, you know, especially if you're new to it. Things can come up very, very quickly. So do it on a nice calm day like today, uh, or do it when there's not a lot of folks out, you know, you do not want to do this when it's crowded, you have wakes, you know, coming from different ways. You can do it with like a moderate wind because you're usually can run, you know, right with it and that's not such a big deal or it's predictable. But when you get boat wakes and stuff that are going different ways, like especially here at Lake the Ozarks, very unpredictable and not something you really want to mess with at high speed. So hopefully this will help you get the most performance out of your boat uh, and let you be able to drive it at higher speed and do that confidently. And part of driving at high speed, I think, like that, will just make you more self-aware, will actually make you a better driver. When you are driving 70 plus miles an hour, you are tunnel vision, you're you're really usually thinking about the boat, how it's performing, and looking for things and stuff like that. And then when you bring it down to a slower speed, it just makes everything seem like it's slow motion again. And it's just, I don't know, I think it just helps you be more aware of your surroundings and just ultimately will let you handle your boat to the best of its ability and know how it can perform and know you know what it can do in certain water situations to help give you the smoothest ride so thanks for watching guys